postman part, postman part, postman part, and it's black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman part, postman part, postman part, and it's black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Fat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters. Your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat had to go slowly along the winding lanes. Someone waved to him, but he couldn't make out who it was. Uh, good morning, he shouted. He was late when he reached the village post office. Good morning, Mrs. Goggins. Sorry I'm late. No need to hurry, said Mrs. Goggins. There's no sign of the letters yet. It'll be this nasty fog. Come and sit yourself down and have a nice cup of tea. Thank you. That'll be lovely after that foggy drive, said Pat. I'll just brew up. Ah, that's lovely. Pat was just getting warm and comfortable, and Mrs. Goggins was just bringing the tea and biscuits when ping went the shop's doorbell. It's early for a customer, said Mrs. Goggins. That's a good cup of tea, said Pat. But Mrs. Goggins came in with the mailbag. It's here, she said. What already? How did he get through so quickly? There's no fog down at Pencaster. It's only in Greendale, so he's not as late as we thought he'd be. Just as I'd picked my favourite biscuit. Oh well, no time for that now. I'd better get on my way. Hold on, Mrs. Goggins. I'll give you a hand. He helped to sort the letters. Not too many today, thank goodness, with all this fog about. Goodbye. Oh, and thanks for the tea. Mind how you go. <laughs> it's as thick as ever out here. Pat knew the Greendale roads well enough, but they looked different in the fog and his lights weren't much help. He must have taken a wrong turn somewhere, so he stopped by a signpost to find out where he was. Oh dear, it wasn't a signpost, only a crossroads sign. Now what? Pat didn't know which way to go. He walked along the lane, 
trying to see through the fog. I can't see a thing. Oh, I'd better not lose sight of the van. Hey, dear. Even my glasses are fogged up. Then he saw someone standing in the field. Why is he so still? It must be Ted Glenn out after rabbits. He'll know the way. I'll pop over with his letter and ask him. Pat walked up very quietly so as not to disturb the rabbits and touched Ted on the shoulder. Ted didn't move. Pat put the letter in Ted's pocket. He still didn't move. Pat gave him a nudge. Oh, it was a scarecrow. Pat did feel silly. He was glad no one saw him. <laughs> Sorry, Scarecrow. The letter isn't for you. And I don't suppose you can tell me the way in this fog. Goodbye. He was just wondering what to do when he saw some lights coming through the fog. It was Alf Thompson on his tractor. Luckily, he wasn't lost. He soon showed Pat which way to go. Pat was on his way again. He saw Sam's mobile shop parked at the side of the road. Hello, Sam. <coughs> this fog gets in your throat, doesn't it? Have you got any cough sweets? Uh, These will do the trick, said Sam. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. <coughs> Cheerio. The next stop was at the church. Hello, Pat. Isn't this fog ghastly? said the Reverend Timms. Don't know how you found your way. What a day for choir practice. But I expect Miss Hubbard will come. <laughs> Nothing stops her. Thanks, Pat. Go carefully and trust in the Lord. Goodbye. Cheerio, Reverend. When Pat got back to his van, he saw that Jess had gone. Pat looked everywhere. Where could that cat be? Perhaps he'd gone looking for rabbits. Pat set out to seek Jess. He called and called. Jess! Jess, where are you? Jess! Come on, Jess! Hippus, push, push, push! Jess! Jess! Push, 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 push! Jess! Come on, Jess! Oh! Come on, Jess, this is no time for hide and seek. Oh! Push, 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 push! Oh, dear, dear, dear. Ooh. Where have you been, Jess? This is no time to wander off. 
Come on. Pat was lost again. Now you've done it, Jess. We're really lost this time. Let's try this way. He couldn't even find the road, let alone his van. Miss Hubbard passed the van on the way to the church. No Pat and no Jess. What could have happened to them? Hello, Vicar. Have you seen Pat? His van's in the road, but there's no sign of him or his cat. Oh, dear. Pat called quite some time ago. They must be lost in the fog. I know what we must do, said Miss Hubbard. We must ring the bells to guide them back to the church. Come along, Reverend. Paul. I wonder why the church bells are ringing. They don't usually ring for choir practice. Still, they're as good as a foghorn. We'll soon find the way now. There's Pat now. Hello, Reverend. Hello, Miss Hubbard. <laughs> it's a good thing you rang those bells. We were completely lost. Never mind, we're all right now. The Lord is our guide, said the Reverend. Come and have some tea. There's plenty in the pot. Thanks, just what I need said Pat. There was some milk for Jess. Look, said Miss Hubbard. It's much lighter outside. The sun was shining and a breeze had blown the fog away. Ah, that's much better, said Pat. Now I can get on with my letters. Come on, Jess. Cheerio. Farewell. Bye, Pat. It was lovely driving along in the sunshine, <laughs> without getting lost. Look, Jess, <laughs> that scarecrow's still waiting for a letter. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. 
Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them, maybe. You can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. One morning, Miss Hubbard, who was always up bright and early, was surprised to see Pat's van still outside his house. Goodness me, Pat should be away by now. I wonder what's wrong. Pat, are you there? Pat! Pat! Goeep! Yoop! Pat, it's late! Ah, oh, there you are! Still in bed, Pat? What about the post? Oh dear, is it that late? I must have overslept. Wretched alarm clock. Morning, Pat. Must go or I'll be late as well. Pat rushed out without any breakfast. I'd better get my skates on. They'll all wonder where I've got to. Oh no, my hat. Come on, Jess. Don't just sit there. Oh! What are you playing at, Jess? Do you think you're Postman Jess or something? Come on, let's get moving. What a start to the day. That alarm clock couldn't have gone off. We're over an hour late already. It was past nine o'clock at the post office. I wonder why Pat is so late, said Mrs. Goggins. Anyway, it gives me time to repair this parcel. Is that him? Oh! It's not my day today, is it? Good morning, Mrs. Goggins. Sorry I'm late. It's that alarm clock. Didn't go off, you know. As bad as this parcel. Just look at it. I do wish people would wrap them up properly. This is a right old mess. Can I help? Oh, my hat. This stuff sticks to everything. Gosh, it's all over my fingers. Ooh, yuck. That's really sticky. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh. oh, dear. You're as bad as me today. All thumbs. There you are. I think it will hold. It's just one of those days, said Pat. Thank you. Wish me luck. I need it today. Ted, 
that messy parcel is for him. We'll give it to him before it falls to bits. Hi, Ted. Got a parcel for you. Ted! Oh, hello, Pat. Is that my parcel? It'll be those spare parts I ordered. Whoops! Oh, no! Dozens of nuts and bolts, cogs and screws rolled away into the grass. Oh, dear. I'll never find them all. Not in this long grass. Hold on. I'll give you a hand. That's one bit. But what about all the others? Bill Thompson had just set out from home on his way to the village when he saw Pat and Ted searching for something in the grass. Have you lost something? He said. Yes, a lot of nuts and bolts. I've got just the thing for that at home. I'll go and get it. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> we'll still be here, said Ted. What's he on about, said Pat. <laughs> Search me. Is this one of them? Mm, no, looks like a rusty nail. <laughs> like this. Rubbish. We're getting nowhere. I know. Look, the lad's back already. And he's got a magnet with him. <laughs> Hope it's a good one or it won't be much use. Have you found much? said Bill. Well, no, not yet. This is really powerful. Picks up anything metal. You have a try. Oh, thanks. It started to pick up all the metal bits from the grass, as well as Pat's glasses. Over here, said Ted. I hope they're all there, said Pat. I'll count them, said Ted. Thanks, Pat. Cheerio. Dunno, Pat. Thanks for your help. Here's another bit. Thanks, Bill. That magnet came in handy. <laughs> what a day, said Pat to Jess. We'll never get through at this rate. His next stop was Thompson Ground. Alf was busy mending the barn wall. Morning, Alf. Sorry I'm late. Got some letters for you. Just leave them on the table. Dorothy's away feeding the chickens. Nothing urgent, is there? No, just a few bills. Oops! Hey, up, what are you doing? Sorry, Alf. Hang on. Hold it steady! Not that way, the other way. I said the other way! Oh! Ouch! Oh, my hand. Oh, it does hurt. Ah! Oh, gosh, that's painful. You all right, Pat? Oh, dear. Well, don't move. I'll go and get something for it. Just then, Mrs. Thompson came back from feeding the chickens. Dear me, whatever have you been up to, Pat? Not looking where I was going, I'm afraid. Walking into ladders. You mustn't make it a habit. Now hold still, and I'll bind it up for you. But you won't be able to drive today, you know. You'll have to rest it. Thanks, but what about all my letters? Said Pat. Just then, Sam Waldron drove his mobile shop into the farmyard. He noticed Pat's bandaged hand. Hello, what happened to you? They told him about Pat's accident and that he was unable to drive. Why don't we put your letters and parcels in my van, said Sam. We can do our rounds together. 
Yes, and then the post will get through after all, said Pat. Thanks, Sam. That's a marvellous idea. Come on, Jess. You'll be all right in there. Thanks, Alf. That's the lot now. We'd better get Dr. Gilbertson to take a look at that wrist, said Sam. It was their first stop anyway. Won't be long. Hello, Pat. Goodness me, what have you been doing? It's my wrist. Come on in. Let's have a look at it. Ouch! Is this where it hurts? Ouch! Ah, well, it's not broken. You'll be all right in a day or two. I'll just give you something to soothe it. You'll soon be able to drive. Oh, thanks, Doctor. Cheerio. Bye. No need to worry. Nothing broken. For twice a week there comes a mobile shop up to the valley. And folks are delighted when he comes around. For it always will save a long journey to town from the valley, the valley. He's always on time as he rings out his chime in the valley. Mothers can plan with a great shopping list. If he cut out his service, oh, he'd be terribly missed in the valley, the valley. the people will want in the valley. valley he buys in the town then he takes things around all his customers know that he won't let them down in the valley the valley Thanks for the lift, Sam. It's been a funny old day, but tomorrow, well, tomorrow's another day. That's the stuff, Pat. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Postman Pat, Postman Pat. And it's black and white cat Early in the morning Just as day is dawning He picks
picks up all the post bikes in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. There was deep snow in Greendale. Peter Fogg was busy clearing the roads. Nobody could get about until he had shifted the snow. Postman Pat, and Sam Waldron, <laughs> and Miss Hubbard followed in Peter's tracks. The Reverend Timms was clearing his path. He waved to Pat as he slowly went by. Keep my seat warm, Jess. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Isn't this snow awful? It's a good thing Peter Fogg's clearing some of the roads. We'd never have got through without him. They do say there's ten-foot drifts up at Intake Farm, Pat. And here's an urgent parcel for George, up at Hilltop. You'll never get there today, you know. Oh, dear. But I'd better take it just in case. I, I usually manage somehow. Well, mind how you go, Pat. We don't want you getting buried in the snow. Oh, I'll be all right. Cheerio. We can always dig ourselves out, can't we, Jess, if we get stuck? Pat was on his way. He had to drive carefully along the slippery roads. At Greendale Farm, the twins were waiting for him. Oh! Who threw that? You little monkeys. Two can play at that game. Hey! What's going on? Oh dear. Sorry, Mr. Thompson. I didn't know you were here. I, I was aiming at the twins. That's all right, Pat. It's only a bit of fun. You're just in time because the road's blocked and the snowplow stuck in a big drift. We've come to dig it out. You could give us a hand. OK. I can't get on with my round anyway till the road's clear. I'll just give Mrs. Pottage her letters first. The snow's bad this year, Mrs. Pottage. Well, <laughs> the twins are enjoying it. <laughs> yes, so I've discovered. Bye, Pat. Peter Fogg was already digging when they got to the snowplow. 
Here we are, Ted. This is the spot. Whoops. Don't worry, Peter. We'll have you out in no time. Thank goodness for that. Phew, it's warm work, I can tell you. Come on, lads, put your backs into it. Hang on, I'll see if I can get through now. He took a run at the snowdrift. Come on, Pete, you can do it. He was through. The twins had been busy. Bye. Bye, Pat. Bye. Pat stopped at the vicarage with a letter for the Reverend Timms. But Dr Gilbertson came to the door instead. Come in, Pat. The poor Reverend slipped on the ice and broke in his leg. Oh dear, that is bad news. Hello, Pat. Just look at this. Isn't it stupid? A piece of bad luck, I'd say, Reverend. But I've brought a letter to cheer you up. Ah, yes, from Cousin Sylvia. That'll make good reading. Oh, but what about the parish magazine? I was going to take it round today. I can take it with my letters, said Pat. No trouble at all. I'll see they get through. Cheerio, Reverend. Thompson ground, Dorothy Thompson was out collecting the eggs. I hope you haven't any letters for Hilltop, she said. The snow's so bad that Peter had to turn back. The plough just couldn't get up the hill. Hmm, I've got a parcel for George marked urgent. What can I do? Perhaps I could walk it. I've got a better idea. We can use the old farm sledge. I've got to take some food up for the sheep. Well, it's a long time since I was on a sledge. But it looks like the only way of getting the parcel there. Here we are, said Alf. You'd better take George some groceries, said Dorothy. He might be running short being snowed up like this. They loaded up the sledge. Off they went. It was hard going uphill, <laughs> but lovely downhill.
the sheep were glad to see them. Just look at that drift. George's house was nearly buried. Hello? Anybody in? George was out. He'd gone to feed his sheep. So Pat left the food and the parcel on the table. We'll have a fast ride downhill, said Alf. Give us a push. Hold on, here we go. Hold on, Pat. Help. Oh, 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 oh dear. You all right, Pat? All in one piece, I think. Hold tight. Hey! Mind that tree. Whoa! Ho, 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 ho. Hey! My goodness. <laughs> That's one way of delivering a parcel. We'll need a hot drink after that, said Alf. Here we are, all ready for you. Jess was glad he'd stayed by the warm fire. Thanks, Mrs. Thompson. Just what I need. Aye, there's no like a good cup of tea. Thanks for the ride. Goodbye. The rest of Pat's round was in the valley and the roads had been cleared and gritted by now. No more digging or sledging today, said Pat. It takes more than snow to stop us, Jess. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat Early in the morning, just as day is dawning He picks up all the post bags in his van Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Everybody knows his bright red van All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock Ring letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning 
Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. It had been wild and windy in Greendale. A lot of branches had fallen from the trees. Some had broken the telephone wires. Dear me, said Pat, that's a nuisance. There'll be a fair number of telephones out of action now. Oh, I wonder if the Reverend Tim's kept that stamp for me. Better pop in and see him. I hope he remembered. Hello, Reverend. I just popped in to see if you kept that Australian stamp yesterday. Of course, Pat. Just the thing for your collection. Waste not, want not. Thanks. But where are you off to, Reverend? London, to meet my sister Elsie. She's flying over from Australia. Haven't seen her for years. Here's that stamp. Thanks. Such a nuisance. I'll have to visit everyone to cancel church meetings while I'm away. Such a bother with a train to catch, too. If only the phone was working. It's this wind we've been having. It's brought the wires down. Well, I'll just have to hurry. The train goes in an hour. Hope you get round in time, Reverend. Cheerio. Have a good trip. called at the post office for the letters. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. I'm not late, am I? Not really, but I thought you might have trouble getting through, what with all these trees blown down. Pat told Mrs. Goggins all about the Reverend Tim's letter, his trip to London, and his telephone being out of action. E, it's a bad job, isn't it? My phone's working anyway, said Mrs. Goggins. Hello, Greendale Post Office here. Who is it? Elsie Timms. Urgent message for the Reverend Timms. Flight diverted to Manchester. You'll come on to Greendale by car. Yes, I'll ask our postman to dash over and tell the Reverend not to go to London after all. I've got the message. Tell her I'm on my way. Bye, Pat. I hope you're in time. Bye. Hold tight, Jess. You're going to see some pretty hot driving now. Look out, Ted! Looks as though the Reverend's gone. I'll leave a note in case he calls back before he goes to the station.
I might even catch up with him at Miss Hubbard's. Now, Jess, we can take a shortcut along the back roads. It was a bit rough. Oh, no! Now, who's left that there? We'll never get past it. There's only one thing for it now. Come on, Jess. We'll have to walk it. Hello, Pat. What's all the hurry? Morning, Miss Hubbard. I'm trying to catch up with the Reverend. Have you seen him? Oh, he went a few moments ago. He's in a hurry, too. He wants to catch the London train. Oh, no. He mustn't go to London. I've got an urgent message for him. He did say he had to call at Ted Glenn's first. You might catch him there. You can borrow my bicycle. Go on. Thanks, Miss Hubbard. I'll try anything once. Come on, Jess. Hold tight. Oh, dear. I couldn't do this every day. Ooh. Oh, dear. Oh, I'll be glad when this is over. Oh. oh, this is hard work. Oh! Hello, Pat. <laughs> Whatever are you doing? You all right? I'm trying to catch up with the Reverend. Oh, you're too late. The Reverend's gone. Uh, but he said he'd call on Granny Dryden before he catches his train. Oh, no. Just look at that front wheel. It looks very peculiar. Leave it to me. I'll fettle it. You can borrow these roller skates. I've just mended them. You'll fairly move when you've got these on. Well, I said I'd try anything, and I must catch the Reverend before he catches his train. Thanks, Ted. Here we go again. Oh, oops! You're doing fine, Pat. It's not so good uphill. How do you stop? Whoa! Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Meanwhile, Sam was taking the Reverend to the train. I thought I saw Pat dive over that gate, said Sam. Hello, Sam. Ah, Reverend. Thank goodness you haven't gone to London. Pat told the Reverend all about his sister's phone message, saying she was coming straight to Greendale. Lord bless us, what a good thing you caught me in time. There's no need to go to London now. Thank you, Pat. Here comes Peter Fogg, said Sam. We'd better get out of the way. Goodbye.
Peter was following Sam's van along the road. Hello, Pat. Sorry I blocked the road with me trailer. I'll give you a ride back to your van. Thanks, Pete. I couldn't walk it. Here's the little story of a very special cat Who's the friend and good companion of a certain postman Travelling through the country with his good friend by his side Pat knows his cat just likes to be there For he always likes to ride through the beautiful valley And its lovely countryside as he sits up by the window and the views go gliding by. Jess is his cat. Jess is his cat. Jess is his cat. And it's always been like that. And it's always been like that. Always been like that. Always been like that. Ever since that he was given as a tiny little kitten Ever since that he was given as a tiny little kitten All the folks in green, they like to wave and stop to chat For they always like to see Pat as he goes by with his cat Through the beautiful valley and its lovely countryside As he sits up by the window and the views go gliding Is his cat. Jess is his cat, and it's always been like that, and it's always been like that. All right, but yes, thanks, Pete. Cheerio. Now, where did I put my pen? I must have left it at the vicarage. The Reverend Timms was carrying his sister's luggage into the house. I made it. Thanks to you, Pat, I got back just before my sister arrived. Oh, and I found your pen on my doorstep. Thanks, Reverend. I hope your sister enjoys her visit. Bye, Pat. Goodbye, Jess. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man.